The application of industrial IoT can be found in several domains. And in this work, uh, this work focuses mainly on process automation scenarios. Within this figure, which shows uh, the uh, potential of industrial IoT to achieve the convergence between the operational technology domain and the information technology domain, within the OT section, the, uh, the industrial process is monitored, controlled, and supervised through a three-layered network architecture. In this work, we focus mainly on the field network level, which has the responsibility of delivering the data collected by the sensors to the control network, and also to deliver the control commands uh, from the control network to the actuators. Industrial wireless system networks support the networking and wireless communication within the field network level. The developed industrial standard for process automation domain are based on the physical layer of the IEEE 82.15.4 standard and rely mainly on the time-slotted channel hopping mode in the data link layer. In this mode, each node is given an exclusive transmission cell within the TSCH schedule to transmit its data. These standards were primarily designed to handle the factory use cases of process automation application, and none of them considered the IP connectivity to support industrial IoT. To this end, the Internet Engineering Task Force has created the 6 Tish group with the aim to provide IP version 6 connectivity at the top of the TSCH mode. The TSCH MAC is placed under IP version 6 protocol stack, including RPL, which is a standard routing protocol for 6 Tish networks. RPL constructs the network in a tree based topology routed to a single node named the dotage route. The whole topology is constructed through the dotage information object and the destination advertisement control message. The developed six dish specifications have managed so far to achieve the goal of the IP version 6 integration. However, they lack to efficient mechanisms and protocols to support reliable and real-time communication at the field network level. Now, I move to the research uh, problem in this work. Different from the consumer IoT, industrial IoT applications are characterized by strict communication requirements in terms of delay and reliability. In emergency events, the field network must deliver emergency alarms to the control network within a predefined deadline, while maintaining robust network connectivity and sufficient packet delivery ratio performance. Based on the received alarm, the control network then decides the immediate action with the help of actuators to avoid the consequences of the emergency event. When field network fa uh, fails to handle such requirements, either the end-to-end -end delay exceeds the predefined deadline or the bucket loss exceeds the specified error tolerance, the control network activates the fail-safe mode that involves a partial or a complete interruption of the industrial process. However, this would be of a significant financial loss since it could take an extended amount of time uh, for, the, uh, uh, for the production process to run at the full rate again. To avoid the transition to the fail-safe mode as much as possible and also to ensure the safety of humans and production assets, the field network should independently from the control network handle the required reliable and real-time performance. However, there are several challenges to achieve such performance. First, the TSCH mode in the existing industrial standard is insufficient to handle the real-time delivery of the aperiodic critical traffic, as in it's impossible to assign a prior transmission time slot for this unpredictable traffic. Instead, it should wait for its assigned time slot, which is unacceptable in critical applications with ha which have strict deadlines. Reserving a set of time slots for each critical flow would be also a significant waste of the communication resources as they will be left empty most of the time at the end of the emergency event. Based on the current traffic classification and process automation scenario, the existing industrial standards and also most of the existing work mainly manage to support the traffic categories from class 5 up to the non-critical type of class 2. Moreover, the retransmission of critical data is scheduled in shared slots following the contention access schemes such as SISMA CA or slotted ALOHA, which offer 
poor performance in terms of delay and reliability. This is as a result of the random collisions and back of times. Also, the allowed retransmission trials is limited to a fixed value that doesn't consider the corresponding timing constraint and link equality. Another challenge to address is the traffic differentiation in mixed criticality application where different traffic coexist in the same network. The industrial standard uh, focuses mainly on single criticality cases. However, there is no strategy defined how to schedule the transmission of different traffic types from the communication perspective according to their corresponding communication requirements. The next challenge is related to the shortcomings of RPL protocol to support the reliable end-to-end -end routing against inevitable compromising factors. One factor is the mobility of nodes, which causes frequent disconnectivity and ultimately performance degradation in the PTR and delay. In fact, RPL has low reactivity to node mobility as it is designed essentially for static networks. In this case, a node reacts to the link repair only when receiving a new DIO message and detects inconsistency in its parent list. The transmission interval of the DIO message is mainly controlled through the trickle timer algorithm, which may have long interval that causes high delay of the handover. Moreover, the slow reaction of RPL to node mobility may lead to routing loops when a parent node, such as the one in the figure, be the descendant of one of its children, which may initiate the need for a global repair of the network topology, which is a significant cost in terms of signaling and delay. The next factor is the traffic congestion in RPL. Each node in RPL selects its parent based on the hop distance or the link equality metric, without considering the queue occupancy. This in turn causes some intermediate nodes, such as node C and E in this figure, to be overloaded with children and suffer from consecutive queue losses that degrade the network performance in terms of PDR and delay. An evaluation of the bucket delivery performance included in this work showed that the queue losses are the major reason of bucket loss. In the current specification of RPL, there is also no strategy how to detect and control congestion in six stage networks. Moreover, there is less attention given to the design of reliable downlink communication, which is essential in several control applications where the dotted root needs to transmit control or actuation commands. RVL downlink routes are established mainly using the storing or the non-storing mode. However, both modes are insufficient in large scale scenarios. In the storing mode, as the one shown here, each parent stores the routing information of all destination in its subtree based on the received DAO message. Due to the limited memory capacity, a parent node may not have the sufficient routing memory to store more destinations. So, these uh, destinations are left unreachable and the dotted route just drops all the packet distance to these unknown destinations, leading to insignificant loss of, of downlink packets. In the non-storing mode, it follows the source routing approach, where only the dotted route had the complete routing information of the network. A packet transmitted by the dotted route is attached with a complete routing header. For long routes, which is the case, of, uh, which is the case in large-scale networks, this leads to packet fragmentation, which decreases the effective maximum transmission unit and ultimately increases packet losses and delay as there is a high probability of packet loss and retransmissions. Based on the previous research challenges, the objective of this work and the corresponding research goals are defined as follows. The main objective of this work is to address the previous challenges and improve the performance of the industrial wireless sensor network in terms of the real-time and reliability performance. To this end, two research goals have been defined. The first goal is to improve the real-time delivery of the aperiodic critical data and support the traffic differentiation in mixed criticality applications. Since reliability has a direct impact on the real-time performance, the second goal is to support robust connectivity and reliable end-to-end -end routing of the RPL standard. Approaching the defined research goals ultimately leads to limit the invocation of the fail-safe mode as much as possible while maintaining improved safety and productivity. 
The scope of the work and the corresponding solutions is limited to the data link and network layers. This is mainly because these two layers fundamentally determine the basic, uh, the basic data transport capabilities in terms of delay and reliability. Three research questions had been formulated to approach goal one, and a set of MAC protocols were proposed to answer these questions. Goal two had been divided into three uh, research questions also, and a set of RPL-based routing solutions are proposed to answer them. The research work mainly follows a theoretical approach through the designing and modeling of the proposed solution, where their potential to answer the corresponding research questions has been proved through extensive discrete, time, uh, discrete event simulations using MATLAB. Now, I move to the research questions and, uh, and the contribution related to the first research goal. The first research uh, uh, question investigates how to enable deterministic and real-time delivery of the event-based critical traffic along with efficient channel utilization. To answer this question, a delay-bounded MAC protocol is proposed in paper one that had the following key contributions. First, while other existing works consider the transmission of a single emergency flow in the network, the proposed method enables an unconflict and a deadline-aware scheduling of multiple critical alarms. Second, the proposed method ensures a deterministic delay performance for the triggered critical data, while other previous work focused mainly on the best effort performance. Third, the proposed method ensures on-demand transmission paradigm of critical traffic to provide efficient channel utilization. The work considers a star network that includes a number of critical nodes responsible of sending emergency alarm to a single controller. At the event of emergency, these nodes are allowed to hijack the time slots assigned for the other non-critical nodes by transmitting a jamming signal in an emergency indication subslot located before each time slot in the frame. The slot owner listens to this subslot before transmitting its data and discards its transmission if it detects a busy channel. After sending the jamming signal, the triggered critical nodes are scheduled to access the channel based on earliest due date scheduling, where the node with the lowest relative deadline gains the highest priority to access the channel. The scheduling process consists of three phases within a single time slot duration. In the first phase, which is the reservation request phase, each critical node sends a reservation request message to the controller, including its relative deadline. This is done by using its dedicated subslot within the reservation request phase. Based on the receive request, the controller constructs and broadcasts the schedule to the critical nodes within the, sec the next phase, which is the deterministic schedule phase. In the advertised schedule, each node is assigned a channel access order number, or CAO, bas uh, based on its relative deadline. The node that receives CAO equal to zero, which had the lowest deadline value, gains the highest priority and transmits its alarm immediately in the final phase in the time slot which is the data transmission phase. Other nodes that receive CAO greater than zero will wait for the next time slots, where the duration of the waiting stage mainly depends on the received CAO value. In this way, the proposed method provides a deterministic delay performance for the critical data as an upper bound for the transmission delay is formulated based on the worst case scenario. And this scenario corresponds to the lowest priority transmission in the network, which is mainly defined by deterministic timing components as stated by the formulated equation here. The performance of the proposed method is evaluated numerically using MATLAB and compared with wireless heart standard. The worst case delay comparison in this figure shows that the proposed method achieved improved delay performance compared to the conventional TDMA strategy in wireless heart. This is under different number of the uh, total nodes N and also under different number of the critical uh, nodes K. The lift uh, figure shows the slot frame structure of the TDMA and the proposed method. In the TDMA case, the time slots that are exclusively assigned to critical nodes will be left unused when there is no emergency triggered leaving a lot of time slot wasted in the consecutive frames as uh, mentioned before. However, the proposed method provides on-demand transmission of the critical data, where the hijacked time slots are retrieved by their owners 
at the end of the emergency event. Therefore, in terms of the number of transmission per slot, frame, slot frame, the proposed method uh, shows al almost a full channel utilization compared uh, to TDMA and wireless R as shown in the right figure here. Despite the encouraging results, the proposed method is limited in this stage to star network scenarios. Moreover, the results are obtained based on assumption of the error-free channel. The second research question is how to achieve traffic differentiation in, max in mixed criticality system to support the reliability and real-time requirements at the same time. The answer is addressed in paper two, which is considered one of the few efforts that address mixed criticality issue from the channel access perspective. Moreover, while previous works assume predictable critical flows, the proposed method considers the unpredictability of critical flows in mixed criticality system, along with the real time and reliability requirements. The work considers a cluster tree network that supports multi-channel data transmission based on TDMA, where each cluster is assigned a different channel to forward its data to the main controller node. There are several use cases of mixed criticality system within the process automation domain. And in this work, the use cases of plastic e extrusion is selected to define the corresponding traffics in the network. Based on the considered case, the proposed method defined three traffic categories. The TP3 traffic represents the non-critical periodic traffic of temperature or pressure measurements that are generated by the distributed sensors along the parallel of the extruder. The TP2 traffic refers to the aperiodic control traffic that is mainly generated when temperature deviations are detected inside the barrel. The deviation can be detected in different sections inside the extruder machine, so multiple nodes may be triggered simultaneously to transmit this type of data. The TP1 traffic represents the critical alarms that are generated when excessive pressure in the barrel is detected. This type of traffic should be transmitted immediately to the controller to avoid safety critical situations. A separate channel access method is, devi is defined for each traffic type based on its criticality level. The transmission of TP3 uh, follows the conventional TDMA scheme. However, the slot owner listens to a short deferral space before access its time slot, which provides a priority strategy. It's, uh, if it's found to be busy, the slot owner gives up its time slot as it indicates ongoing attempt from higher critical traffic, which is TP2. The aperiodic control traffic TP2 is given a higher priority than TP3, and its, its transmission is based on a random CCA mechanism. Before transmitting its TP2 data, the node sends a jamming signal within the SDS period. An extended CCA period is introduced after the SDS in each time slot, where each node randomly selects a number of CCA subslots to check the channel. When the node finds the channel free within the selected CCA subslots, it transmits a jamming signal within the remaining CCA period. This is to occupy the time slot and avoid collision with other contending nodes. This way, the collision probability is significantly reduced. Due to its high criticality, the TP1 traffic is given the highest priority to access the channel and is transmitted only by the cluster head nodes. This is after suspension of any ongoing transmission of other traffics. The adopted uh, frequency diversity between the clusters allows simultaneous transmission of alarms to the controller. The performance of the proposed, uh, the proposed method is compared to its priority MAC protocol, which is, the, uh, which is almost uh, the most related work to deal with mixed criticality networks. Since TP1 traffic is transmitted only by the cluster head, regardless of the ongoing transmission, the proposed method achieved improved and stable delay of TP1 traffic compared to priority MAC, in which the delay of critical data is mainly affected by the existing of other transmission already in progress, which is described by the probability sigma. The real-time performance is further described by the on-time BDR metric, which reflects the percentage of packets delivered successfully within a predefined line. The proposed method gains improved on-time BDR performance compared to priority map, where it managed to deliver almost all critical packets within a deadline of 50 milliseconds. 
The channel axis delay of TP2 traffic is mainly affected by the generation probability sigma. As sigma increases, the collision probability increases between contending nodes. However, the proposed method attains improved performance compared to priority MAC. This is mainly due to the adopted CCA, random CCA strategy that decreases the collision probability. The proposed method, in turn, gains improved on-time BDR of the TP2 traffic when compared to priority MAC under 200 millisecond delay. In this stage, the proposed work is mainly limited to cluster 3 topology of the industrial wireless sensor network. Moreover, the work needs a physical definition of the cluster head regarding the suspension of the ongoing traffic in emergency events. Also, throughout the conducted simulations, collision is considered the only source of transmission errors. The third research question investigates the possibility to design a dynamic retransmission scheme to improve the real-time performance of critical traffic. The question is answered in paper 3, which is considered the first effort to optimize the retransmission limit of emergency data in six-stitch network, considering link equality and timing constraints. The optimization problem is formulated to minimize the submission of transmission failure probabilities along the delivery path of an emergency flow. This is, at the, uh, this is, uh, is restricted also by the deadline bound. The objective function was proved to be convex, so the optimization problem can be solved via the Lagrangian duality theory using the subgradient method with a uh, fixed step size. At each hop, the node updates the number of hops by decreasing one hop and the deadline value by subtracting the past transmission time. Moreover, the transmission of emergency traffic follows a slot stealing mechanism to further improve its real time performance. The performance of the proposed method is evaluated under log normal shadowing channel model and compared with two modes of orchestra protocol. The figure shows that the proposed methods managed to maintain improved end to end delay of the emergency data compared to that of orchestra schemes, which is mainly due to the intro introduced features of the cell hijacking and the adopted optimized retransmissions. However, in orchestra uh, scheme, emergency data is assigned fixed, re re uh, fixed transmission slots which add extra delay, especially as the refresh interval increases. The reduction in the end-to-end -end delay leads to improved real-time performance, as dem demonstrated by the on-time BDR comparison here. For instance, the proposed methods managed to deliver more than 95% of emergency packets within a deadline of 250 milliseconds, while orchestra fails almost to deliver more than half of the emergency packets within the same deadline. Looking to the comparison with the number of hops, increasing the hop distance reduces the on-time BDR of all methods. However, the proposed method still maintains on-time BDR improvements compared to the orchestra schemes. The key limitation of this work is that the effect of the proposed dynamic retransmission method on the communication determinism of emergency data is not considered. Moreover, the complexity of the proposed optimization problem with regard to the resource constrained devices in six stitch networks needs to be investigated. Next, I present the research questions and the corresponding contributions related to the second research goal. The first research question investigates how RPL can be improved to support mobility. The work introduced in paper four answers this question by introducing a reliable mobility aware routing protocol. Different from the reactive methods proposed in the previous work, the main contribution of this work is the adapting of proactive method that predicts the movement direction of mobile nodes, which in turn reduces the disconnection time and packet losses. Moreover, the proposed method presents some mobility aware rank updates to avoid network loops, which is not considered in other works. The basic idea is to predict the movement direction and link failure based on three values of the received signal strength indicator, a recent value, a past value, and a threshold value. Moreover, two, uh, two time to stay timers are included that determine for how long a node should be kept in the parent list before a new DIO message is received. The proposed method described the node reaction when it receives a new DIO message from a neighbor node, which is not NP in the shown figure. If the node is within the good communication range, at the case of node N1 in the example, it keeps NP in its parent list for a long time 
by assigning the uh, long uh, timer TS2 and updates its rank to ensure that the in, uh, that NP can be selected as a parent node. If the recent value is less than the threshold, then the node first have, uh, has to decide the movement direction based on the recent and the previous values of RSSI. If the recent value is less than the previous one, as the case of N2, then it means that the two nodes are moving away. So the receiver attaches the short timer TS1 to this node and updates its rank by adding the minimum hop increase to its current rank. This is to ensure that the moving node is not selected uh, as a parent by its children in four in this case to avoid network loops. Finally, when the recent value is greater than the previous one, which means that the two nodes moving towards each other as N3, then the same as the first case applies for both the timer and the rank as the transmitter can be kept in the parent list for a longer time. The proposed method also includes a modified TIO inter a DIO interval to cope with the mobility situation in a timely manner. The modified timer enables node with lower rank to transmit the DIO message more frequently, which helps disconnected nodes to attach to new parents quickly. The performance of the proposed model is, uh, model is evaluated in terms of the PTR and average delay and compared to RPL with objective function zero and ECMRPL protocol using random waypoint uh, model for the mobility. The basic idea of ECMRPL is to consider mobile nodes only as leaf nodes and its evaluation consider only a single mobile node in the network. As shown in the lift figure, the proposed scheme gains improved BDR performance compared to other works under dense mobili uh, mobility scenario. This is mainly due to the pro uh, proposed proactive method that helps mobile nodes to quickly attach to new parents to avoid extensive packet losses, which in turn improves the average end-to-end -end, uh, delay as shown in the right figure. On the other hand, EC, uh, ECMRPL almost had the same end-to-end -end delay as RPL due to the extended disconnection time before the mobile nodes connect to a parent node, and also due to the increased uh, forwarding load in static nodes, which also increases the packet loss and average delay. The detection of movement in this work is mainly based on the RSSI value, which might be a key limitation under the conditions of high channel fluctuations and interference. Moreover, the performance is evaluated only under a limited range of node velocity. The second research question investigates how to improve RPL under congestion scenarios. To answer this question, a congestion co uh, detection and control method is proposed uh, in paper 5. The proposed work introduces a novel congestion control method based on a joint routing uh, metric that consider Q occupancy along with the hop count and the quali uh, channel quality metrics. Moreover, the method includes a probability-based parent selection strategy to avoid herding effect which is not considered in other works dealing with congestion in six dish networks. In the proposed method, congestion is detected using a load balancing criteria based on the monitoring backlog information of parent nodes. And the congestion is detected when the backlog of the parent node exceeds a congestion threshold. When the criteria is satisfied, the node selects a new parent that has the minimum routing metric. A new joint routing metric is defined that considers the hop distance, the expected transmission count as a reflection to the, quali uh, the link equality, and also the backlog state, where the backlog factor is giving a higher weight in this case lambda. When the network is under low traffic conditions, where no congestion is detected, a new parent is selected based on the hop and link equality criteria, where the routing metric consists of the hop distance and the expected transmission count. When congestion is detected, several nodes may change to the same parent, causing congestion again. And the nodes may repeat the same transition in an indefinite cycle, which is known as the herding effect. To avoid this problem, a probability-based parent switching strategy is defined, where each node decides to switch to a new parent based on a certain probability using a, switch, a switching factor gamma. The congestion information are exchanged between the nodes by embedding the backlog factor in the rank value included in the DIO message. The new rank value is encoded in the transmitter, in the transmitter side using a coding factor, eta, which is then used by the receiver 
to decode the message and extract the backlog factor value. Moreover, the proposed method includes a modified reset strategy for the trickle timer to timely distribute the congestion information. The method implies resetting the timer to its minimum value I minimum when the node experiences a certain number of consecutive queue losses within a certain time window regulated by the timer X. The performance of the proposed method is evaluated under a network size of 30 nodes, each with a buffer size of 10 packets. The performance is compared against RPL and the related work which is CoAR protocol that also deals with the congestion problem using a complex multi-criteria method. This figure graphically describes the routing topology at the end of simulation for both RPL and the proposed method. As it's shown, the adopted congestion control strategy in the proposed method achieved a fair load distribution compared to RPL. As a result of the achieved load balancing, the proposed methods managed to reduce the queue loss ratio, where the, its potential is more ob obvious in heavy traffic conditions. Since queue, loss, uh, queue losses represent a major part of the packet losses, as mentioned before, the achieved reduction in queue loss ratio improved the PTR in turn, compared also to RPL and CoAR. The main limitation of this work is that the errors in the propagated DIO message that carry the backlog information are not considered. Another limitation is how to select the congestion threshold in a proper way. The final research question is how to maintain reliable dial link connectivity in large scale six stitch network considering the, memory, uh, the routing memory limitation. The question is investigated in the work proposed in paper six, which represents a hybrid subscription method. Previous works that deal with the issue of dial link connectivity mainly considers the assumption of mixing both the storing and non-storing modes. Besides its complexity, the current specification of RPL standard prevents the coexistence of the two modes in the same network. Different from these works, the proposed method presents a lightweight routing protocol based on the storing mode of RPL that is less complex and RPL compliant. The proposed method comprises two phases. The first phase is the subscription phase, where an intermediate node where an intermediate node that receives a DO rejection joins a multicast group known as the relief group. This group acts as a virtual route towards unknown destination in the network. The members of the group mark the nodes in their routing table for which they have received DO rejections. The dotage route transmits packets with unknown destination to the relief group, where the packet is then processed by the member that has a market entry matches the original destination address of the packet. The, recovery, the second phase is the recovery phase, which is adopted to limit the size of the relief group by finding alternative DAO parents for the rejected destinations. A memory flag is included in the DIO message to indicate the routing memory status of each node. A member in the group transmits a DAO request to the neighbor that has a free routing memory to include one of its mar market entries. If the member managed to uh, advertise all its market entries, it can unsubscribe from the group. In the simulations, a process, uh, a process control application is considered where a packet is transmitted by the dotage route to a random node every 10 seconds. First, looking to the behavior of the relief group with time, a high number of nodes first join the group when failing to forward the DAO message. However, the group size decreases as more nodes leave as a result of the recovery phase. The performance of the proposed method is compared with the storing and non-storing modes of RPL in terms of the downlink PDR and the number of control messages. The combined subscription and recovery phases manage to improve the downlink PTR compared to both modes in RPL, where the effectiveness of the proposed method is more obvious at the network size scales. The improved performance, however, comes at an insignificant cost of the increased number of DAO messages and this is mainly due to the recovery phase. The key limitations of this work are mainly the need to define a multicast protocol for the relief group and to also consider the point-to-point -point communication between nodes. Now, I move to the conclusion and the future work. The investigations and results presented in this work have revealed the following point. 
Adopting, uh, adopting slot stealing and deadline hour scheduling are effective strategies to improve the real-time performance of the unpredictable crit uh, critical traffic and also to attain efficient channel utilization. The retransmission limit should be dynamically adjusted considering the link quality and timing constraints to further improve the, uh, the real-time performance of critical flows. Reactive methods are insufficient to cope with mobility in RVL and instead proactive detection is needed. Congestion aware parent selection should be considered to improve the connectivity and reliability in RPL networks. RPL modes provide poor downlink connectivity in large scale networks and alternative methods should be adopted to deliver critical control and actuation comments. The work in this thesis can be extended in a way to cover the corresponding research gaps, such as conducting experimental work to test the performance of the proposed solution in an industrial setting. Also, more investigations are needed with respect to energy efficiency and synchronization mismatch. Moreover, other research directions can be addressed, such as investigating the potential of 5G networks, particularly the ultra-reliable and low-latency communication, to achieve the strict timing requirements of industrial IoT. Also, the intelligent framework provided by cognitive radio systems can be adopted to dynamically adapt the network performance according to the application requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Osam, for this presentation. So we will take a five minute break to set up a uh, little bit here before the discussion with the faculty opponent starts. So thank you all and see you in five minutes. <laughs>